people have been sounding the alarm for a very long time now that AI is going to take a lot of jobs. Artificial intelligence could replace millions of jobs, especially white collar jobs. The common response to this is, oh, that's why you should go into the trades, go into blue collar jobs. Those will be safe. Are they though? Are blue collar jobs safe from AI? Are any jobs safe from AI? In this video, we're going to answer this question and figure out what to do about it. A portion of this video is sponsored by Course Careers. Reynolds, artificial intelligence is just three months away from taking your job. This here is a graph from Microsoft about the evolution of AI in the workplace. First, we started with chatbots like ChatGPT. You can ask it questions and it will answer it for you. Pretty helpful. Then we move on to something that incorporates RAG, which is retrieval augmented generation. This is a technique in which AI models are able to take real-time data and incorporate that into conversations, making it able to answer more specific questions and keep up with what's happening in the real world. Next, we started having co-pilots like Microsoft Copilot. These are agents that are meant to work side by side with you in order to increase your productivity. Now we're moving into fully autonomous agents. Agents that are meant to do the task and fulfill a specific role without human intervention. For example, the recently debuted Devin the AI software engineer that's allegedly able to do many of the tasks of a software engineer. We also have some reports that OpenAI is working on some closed source AI for agents. Two different agents. The first one is supposed to be a type of agent that's able to execute tasks within an environment, like transfer data to a spreadsheet. Another one is able to do web-based tasks such as booking airfares even without using APIs. So kind of general office worker slash assistant type agents. Now, more recently, there was the O1 Lite that was released. I'm holding the first device powered by this operating system in my hand right now. It's called the O1. The O1 Lite is a portable voice interface that allows you to control your home computer. It can see your screens, do stuff to your apps, and even learn new skills. Most importantly, it's also open source. So even though the demo shows something that's more like a generalized assistant, it allows developers to make agents for specific rules and specific tasks. I'm sure very soon we're going to be seeing a lot of open source agents that are developed. So yeah, maybe not just paranoia, uh, more and more office workers are starting to realize this and kind of alarm bells are sounding a bit. And with these developments, I'm seeing more and more comments on my videos saying something to the lines of should have gone for a blue collar job. Ha 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 ha. But hold on, not so fast. Robots have been around for a very long time, but only recently have there been significant progress in the domain, mostly due to the help of AI. In fact, starting quietly in December of 2023, Amazon started rolling out a robot that kind of takes the role of a warehouse worker. It's 175 centimeters and 65 kilos, which in freedom units is 5 foot 9 and 143 pounds. It can carry up to 16 kilos or 35 pounds. In this Washington Post article, this Amazon executive was claiming that Digit was deployed due to shortages of warehouse workers. He insists that, yeah, this may render some jobs redundant, but it's not meant to replace jobs and will create new ones too. But then fails to answer what kind of jobs it will create. Then there's figure one. What's special about figure one isn't just that it's very agile, it has very agile fingers, but that it's the first robot that's able to have a proper conversation with you and is fully autonomous. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Which means that unlike Tesla's robot, for example, figure one is actually able to learn and carry out tasks independently without human intervention. This is largely due to an integration with OpenAI's AI models. So yeah, we finally reached a day of AI plus robotics. Figure AI, the company behind Figure One, has recently just raised $675 million, backed by superstar investors, including Jeff Bezos himself, NVIDIA, Microsoft, and OpenAI. This, of course, is only one robot in a sea of robots. Innovation in robotics is only going to accelerate faster and faster, especially with Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, recently in GTC revealing several innovations, several breakthroughs, with two of them very specifically created for development in robotics. We need a simulation engine that represents the world digitally for the robot so that the robot has a gym to go learn how to be a robot. We call that virtual world Omniverse. Robots can be trained within this Omniverse by creating a digital twin, a version of itself in the simulation world. It's able to learn things and then directly take those learnings and apply them into the real world. This is NVIDIA Project Groot. Then there is Project Groot, 
which is a general purpose foundational model for humanoid robots. Groot is able to let these robots learn from just a handful of human demonstrations through imitation learning, reinforcement learning, as well as generating robot movements through video data. There is about to be an explosion of robots in the market. If you're interested on working on these kinds of projects, you want to be at the forefront of these new technologies, or if you just want to take advantage of the opportunities that these new technologies bring, I want to introduce you to Course Creators, the sponsor of this portion of the video. Thank you so much, Course Creators. One of the biggest hesitations that people have about learning technical skills in changing their job into a technical one is that they think they have to go back to school. But this is not the case. Course Careers is changing the way people start careers and even replacing college itself. Many of their graduates don't have any previous experience or even related degrees, yet they're able to outcompete college graduates and even people with experience when going for a job. And that's because their education is perfectly aligned with entry-level positions and teaches you everything required to land a job from start to finish. Industry professionals provide unlimited coaching on the platform, so you can also get mentorship from people working in the industry. Given how in demand technical people are in building the future, they have employers on their platform requesting to interview graduates. And top students are getting jobs without even applying. I am such a huge fan of their platform and their philosophy because there is no better way and faster way to get a job. Plus, just look at that pricing. That is something else to debunk when people think that they have to spend a lot of money in order to learn these skills and start a technical career. I would especially recommend the software engineering tracks because these are the roles that are most needed in order to build these technologies. And they're also the highest growing roles in the next few years. Students go through a fundamentals course that covers all the basics that you need and will also help you learn and adapt to new technologies very quickly. They can then specialize in targeted front-end, back-end, or DevOps, which allows them to quickly get a job. Course Careers offers a free introduction course, which you can check out at this link, also linked in description. Thank you so much, Course Careers, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now, back to the video. I scared! That bad old putty cat never gonna find me in here. Humans, like any animal, have this instinctive need for safety. Our survival instincts drive us to seek environments and situations where we feel safe and protected. But we're also territorial when it comes to things like food and shelter and land, but also more abstract things like social status, our identities, money. Defending against the things that we think are ours is a natural expression. When these things feel threatened, we also have this fight or flight response. It's a very strong reaction in which we need to either fight the threat or flee away and run away from the threat. So this is why it actually makes a lot of sense where so many people are kind of like freaking out about AI potentially taking their jobs um, because it's something that belongs to them, their jobs, right? They feel like it's a threat that's gonna come and they either fight it or many people also want to flee from it. And those that are fleeing from it often are really obsessed with the concept of AI safe jobs, jobs that the AI cannot encroach on, the AI cannot threaten and take away. Just a few months back, people thought that this would be trade jobs, blue collar jobs. But with robotics, maybe not. But now people are thinking, oh, like maybe we should now just look at jobs that have to do with a lot of human connections. It's like people are desperately trying to find the safest job in this shrinking pool of safe jobs. Here's my opinion, okay? This is a useless exercise. Honestly, some sort of thing is going to be developed. Technology and innovation is going to keep happening. And with each breakthrough, with each progression, AI is going to be impacting more and more roles. Whether that be just to help it augment that job or potentially replace that job, it's hard to say. But this pool of AI safe jobs, which in other words is jobs that people think won't be as impacted by AI, this pool is just going to keep shrinking and shrinking. A few years ago, we were convinced that AI could never be as good at anything than a human. Yet, just a couple years ago, we got ChatGPT, and now we're getting autonomous agents. We also thought that AI will never be able to touch what we thought as creative things, like art and creative writing. And now, many of us are marveling at the incredible pieces of AI art. AI written books, AI videos. Just months ago, people working in blue collar jobs were laughing at the white collar job people who were panicking about AI taking over their jobs. And now, we have the development of robotics and robots potentially replacing many warehouse jobs too. Who knows? But AI is going to be impacting more and more jobs. And I'm not trying to make a prediction either, just to be clear. I'm just trying to point out that many people are paralyzed by this fear. They keep retreating and discussing and examining this pool of dwindling AI-proof jobs, trying to figure out what jobs are going to be safe from AI today, 
one year from now, three years from now, five years from now. If you feel that way, I can assure you that obsessing over that question, which jobs are safe from AI, is never going to relieve your anxiety. It's just going to keep making it worse and worse. I have no control! The term locus of control is defined as how much control a person feels about their own behavior and the things that are happening. A person can either have an internal or external locus of control. Somebody with a high internal locus of control perceives themselves as having a lot of control over their own behaviors and the things that are happening to them. For example, they may say something like, I did well in the exams because I revised really hard. In contrast, someone who has a high external locus of control feels like they don't have any control over the things that are happening around them and their own behaviors. It's due to other people or other things. They may say something like, I did well on this test because the test was easy. Now, let's go back to that question. Which jobs are safe from AI? This is clearly an external locus of control type of question. It implies that what happens to you, which job that you choose, is dependent on what technological breakthroughs in AI or robotics or whatever is having on the job market. The right question is more along the lines of, what can I do to make myself safe from AI? In fact, take this one step further. What should I do so that I can benefit from AI? How can I make my job relevant in the age of AI? How can I reinvent it? Now, to answer this question, the first step is to not count on any company or job title to provide you with a sense of safety and security from AI development. That is a boomer mentality where people work the same job at the same company for their entire working life. You need to provide yourself with a sense of security and safety. First, you need to defend yourself against the chaos of the economy and the chaos of the job market too, probably by having a good emergency fund and multiple streams of income. Then you think about how do I upscale? How do I keep up with the developments of AI and apply it to my domain so that I'm even more valuable? Now, exactly how to do that, what to learn and what resources to use. I go into a lot of detail linked in this video over here you should check that one out. But for now, I hope this video has helped you understand that obsessing over the question of which job should I do that is safe from AI is just gonna cause even more anxiety, more distress, and it's not gonna make you feel better. The right question is what should I do to make myself safe from AI? All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Please leave a comment below about what you think. I am genuinely very, very curious. And I will see you guys in the next video or live stream.